to die for me. So. Thank you, Lord. 
you. Until you've been touched by it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Until you've been touched by it. Thank you, Lord. You don't know. Amen. Thank you. You don't know. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, mm. Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Even when we're not paying attention and we breath the name of the Lord Jesus, in the kingdom of darkness, they don't know if we playing or not. They don't know if we're serious or not. Some of them probably say, well, they don't mean to say his name. <coughs> but his name is precious. His name is wonderful. My. His name. He is God with us. Amen. Hmm. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, honey, for just letting the Lord use Amen. you. Amen. No one touch you like the Lord Jesus. And he touches us in places that we didn't even know existed. Down in the ruin and the recesses of our spirits. Where the place where we can know God intimately. We can know him personally. And he's known through the name Lord Jesus. Neither is that salvation in any other. Amen. There's none other name. Under heaven, given among men whereby we must be saved. We can live off of the name that Jesus. saves us. Jesus. And if we will be sustained. Jesus. Jesus. If you just Jesus. say his name over, not like a Jesus. mantra or some type of incantation, but just that marvelous, matchless, glorious, precious name, Jesus. Yes. He shall be called Jesus because he shall save his People. His people. He's our kinsman redeemer. He's our redeemer. But beloved, we want to get right into the message. We we thank the Lord for this privilege and all opportunity to come before you and to stand where the Lord Jesus Christ would stand if he was here today. And this is our twenty fourth session concerning evangelism and perfecting the saints and today's message uh, is light intercedes for salt light intercedes for salt and our focus is going to be and this we have a play on words here in our focus Abraham had a lot on his mind. And the play on words is where you have the word a lot. Lot was his nephew. And Lot's influence was experienced up there in Sodom and Gomorrah. So today's message is light intercedes for salt. Our focus, Abraham had a lot on his mind. If you would join me in Genesis chapter 18. And we're going to pick it up in verse 23. Genesis 18. In 23, if you are able to stand for the reading of God's Word, Genesis chapter 18, and we're going to put in at verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, 
Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, there be fifty righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Thank you, beloved, for standing and join me in praying over light intercedes the salt. Our Father and strong God, as we approach this preaching hour with uh, hesitation to make sure that we're in step and in stride with your spirit, but also in anticipation of what you will say by your word. Father, we avail ourselves now as the apostles did when they gathered around the person of Christ. And now your church, we have the same opportunity to know that he is in this place. We can't see him, but he can see us. And as he looks through us, might he also see our great need to know what it is that you're saying specifically to the church in this connection, but also to those who don't know you in the pardon of your sins. So we ask, Holy Father, that you would help us to see how, as being the salt of the earth and the light of the world, that there are times when, uh, depends on where we are, that light has to do more so that salt would be in a better position. <coughs> so we want to thank you and give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen. What has led to us coming here? Genesis 18, we are in the Gospel of Mark as we work our way to the conclusion of Mark chapter 5, and it's uh, uh, all of the verses, that our Lord had made a statement in Mark chapter 4, verse 21 through 23, and essentially what he said is that the light of the message of the kingdom of God is not to be uh, put uh, under a bed or under a bushel, that it is to be declared. And he was thinking uh, in the present environment, but also in the church. So quite naturally, it needs to be read when we come to the uh, epistles all the way through to uh, Revelation concerning the kingdom of God. And we're to read and to study and we're to have teachers to teach us to the degree that we do understand. And if we don't, we need to back up and see why that's not the case. And then we went over to see the in the, the Synoptic Gospel another reference to this in Matthew chapter 5. But it began by saying that we are the salt of the earth. Uh, in verse 13 and then in Matthew 5 and 14, it says that we are the light of the world. And I, and I wanted us to see uh, an illustration of what it means to be uh, light and salt in the Old Testament economy. And that has brought us here uh, to where we are uh, presently. Now, we spent some time in this uh, portion of Scripture, and the Lord and the angels are prepared now to go uh, to Sodom, and the Lord, he delayed his leaving, his departure, to uh, make known to Abraham, you know, what his business was. And we learned that both he and Abraham had the same interests up in Sodom. Uh, they both had interest in salt, and they also had interest in destruction. So when the Lord went to Sodom, he, he wasn't going to, to really see how bad things were. 
It was just another step that gave them just a little more time to get right. Seeing it from the lofty throne there at the right hand of the majesty on high, <coughs> it was incredibly wicked. But seeing it from the, the, the human plane, it was despicably wicked. So he wasn't going to, to give them, uh, they weren't going to get any, any, any messages concerning how to be saved or any of that stuff. Uh, he wasn't going to go there to, to uh, give them really a second chance. This was really a reconnaissance mission that he was on. The Lord Jesus was on a reconnaissance mission. Uh, similar to that in Joshua uh, chapter, you don't have to turn that, but I'm going to go there and just read from Joshua chapter 5. And because uh, this one who's standing in the presence of Joshua is the same one who's here about to lead Abraham's. Let's make this scripture reference, if you would. Joshua chapter 5, beginning at verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he, he lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. Now, you, you probably need a better description than that and I got to come back to it. But let me give you another one here very quickly. So did you see this one in whom is at Joshua's in his presence toward Jericho and the one who's standing there in the presence of Abraham. And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and true. And in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. So what I'm saying, this is this is a reconnaissance mission that the Lord He's going in to, to look at the enemy. To, to see how He's gonna not enhance Sodom and Gomorrah. He's, he's not going there to renovate the city. He's going there to destroy it. And in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. We just got finished talking about the one who died on the cross. Same one, same difference with a big D. Same difference. And his name is called the word of God. And the armies. See, Joshua is in the presence of the one who is the captain of the Lord's host. The Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal word. He is the one who is over the armies of heaven. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Now notice, when Joshua saw him, he had a sword drawn. But here, what I'm reading here, and I'm going to let you know where the address is. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. That's Revelation chapter 19 verses 11 through 16. Back to Joshua chapter 5. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And the one who has the sword in his mouth in glory. 
Notice how he addresses him. He says, nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did what? Worship. Because that's what you do when God is, mm, when God is in the place, you don't spectate. You worship. You close your eyes. You go inward. That you might be able to look outward and see him high and lifted up. Joshua recognized and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said, Unto him, essentially, what he told Moses from the burning bush. This is the one who's the head of the church. Listen, he's the one who is the shot caller. I know y'all see us, but don't think for one moment that, that we have died for any of you, that we're able to live for you, except to pray for you and love you. This is the one who went to Calvary's cross. And then the message on last night that came over into the day, in order to be saved, you have to fall on the one whom Daniel saw had been cut out of a mountain without hands. He's the king, sovereign in nature. He is the one true and living God, and he's the word of God. More specifically, he's the one we've identified with as Jesus Christ. Can't be saved unless you fall on someone who was rejected by men. See, if you save, you know you didn't save yourself. Couldn't do it. But God, to just, you know, this trips up the wisdom of man that he would put in place that in order to be saved, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall he preach unless he be sent by the Holy Ghost? You got to fall on. In order to be saved, you got to you got to fall on rejection of men. Despise, ridicule, hate it without a reason. Some envy him, others misunderstood him. But the only way you were saved, you had to fall on the one whom man rejected. The stone which the builders rejected, he's become the head of the corner. He's the chief cornerstone, is what Peter said. He's the one holding this thing together. I know we look like a motley crew. And maybe even the nation of Israel, as Joshua was getting ready to go up there, he had some reservations about what the folk looked like, but now he's going to be reassured because he know God done spoke to him previously. Now he done showed up and he's telling him, letting him know, this ain't about you. I'm not coming to be on your side. Brother, you on my side. Glory to God. Loose thy shoe from off thy foot. If, listen, brother, can I just say this? I know we, the, the text is so juicy, so sweet to hear. Yeah, if you really knew God was here, in some cases, you take your shoes off. Why? Because of who he is. Because of where we've been. Because of what we've done. Look at your feet. Where have you been? What have you done? Loose thy shoe from off thy foot. Why? Because I'm going to give you shoes? Why? Because I'm going to do something to your foot? Listen. For the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Joshua wasn't slow. Joshua wasn't, wasn't slow like Dennis. You know, the biggest mistake we make in the church is because we can't see him. 
But have you ever been somewhere and you thought you weren't being seen? You didn't see no one. It didn't mean that someone wasn't looking at you. He's here. We can't, we can't be the church without him. We can't serve him without him. We can't minister to others without him. So this is a reconnaissance mission. Back here to our, our text. He's not, he's not going up there to, to do anything except scope things out. If these folks won't get what they're long overdue because of his long suffering, because of him being faithful to who he is. But we're going to learn the value of salt more specifically, but also light in this matter as this comes together here in the next few moments. Scene one. We've been here. Scene one. And I call this, this is where light, and I'm looking at Abraham. Abraham could, could stand in for light. He was chosen to be the father of many nations. And Abraham had a lot on his mind, even as the Lord is present. Abraham had concerns about Lot, his family, his well-being up there in the big city with all of the bright lights. Y'all remember that when it came time for them to choose the land, Abraham was just so confident. It, it didn't matter where he lived. He was going to prosper because wherever he went, God was already there. So he gave his nephew an opportunity to choose where he was going to live. And he chose to live towards Sodom. Here in scene one. Listen at Abraham operating from an aspect of light, praying for his nephew, Lot, who represents salt. See, if all we had was the this account concerning Lot, you, you might leave here thinking that Lot, Lot, life was messed up because he was messed up and he wasn't saved in the Old Testament sense of it. But I know I have Bible students here. And you know that that wasn't Lot's case. Here in scene number one. Light intercedes for Saul. And Abraham drew near him and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Now, Abraham is spending time with the Lord so he knows his wickedness. What word he has, he, he's understanding that. He wasn't perfect. But he knows him well enough to say, peradventure there be 50 righteous within the city, will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are in, that are therein. Now, I'm going to tell you who he has on his mind. He has a lot on his mind. He has Lot on his mind. But not only Lot, he has Lot's family. And then he has Lot's influence. Because Lot was raised by Abram. If you go back over here to verse 19 of chapter 18, the Lord is talking to Abraham and he says, For I know him, I know Abraham that he will command his children and his household. He's going to lay down some rules and some regulations, some stipulations. He's going to have the word to govern the house after him. So, in other words, essentially, and I don't think Abraham had to say this, you're going to live here? You're going to live like I live. And they shall keep the way 
I love this. Keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Lot was, Lot was a righteous man. L listen to this. Herein, you can jot this reference down. Second Peter, chapter two. Matter of fact, um, turn turn to Second Peter. You go to Revelation, come back few books, and you get to John, and then you'll get to uh, the Johns, and then you'll get to 2 Peter. 2 Peter, I want you to see this, 2 Peter chapter 2, because this is going to give us what the Spirit is letting us know concerning who Lot really is, who he was there with Abraham here in Second Peter chapter two. Beginning at verse one. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. And bring upon themselves with destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. By reason of whom the way shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words. That's artificial words. Plastic words. Make merchandise of you. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Now, now we're getting into the, the meat of this thing. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. This is why we came here. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly and deliver just lot. This speaks of his character. Listen at what's going on inside of just lot. Vex. He's vexed. That word means to be oppressed within himself with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Sodom and Gomorrah had gotten to Lot. And, and, and Lot had gotten to Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to see that. For that righteous man, there it is, for that righteous man dwelling among them, to them, he was a drop of pure water. Not that he was pure in and of himself, but you get the idea. But what he was, he was salt. He was the divine influence of God on the ground. That Sodom could see what it truly means to be saved. But they were so wicked, ungodly, ungrateful, heathens run amok, the children run in the house, no one in charge except to that's how we're going to do evil. And notice this, in seeing what you're going to see today, Lot, when he opened his eyes up, but I'm going to see the grace of God. I'm going to see the goodness of God. But I'm going to have to go out here and live in this city. 
I'm going to have to go to my post. They're at the gate. And see, when you're at the gate, when you're in a place of authority and you've been given great responsibility, you see everybody. You see folk just as they are. And seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul. Lot was miserable. It's a lot like you, child of God. You here? We're going to get to this. I hope I, can, I, I don't forget to get to it. They saw a lot, not as someone who was, well, where I come from. If you, look, if you move like from Philadelphia and you came down to where I come from, when they start talking about folk in the neighborhood, they say, well, yeah, this person, that person. And then they say, those come here. Those come here. That's a come here. They don't belong here. No matter how long they stay here, they can pitch their tent. Let me put it this way. They can drive their stakes in the ground deep. Pitch their tent, but they'll never be from there. And Lot was never from there. Matter of fact, while I'm thinking about it, y'all don't have to turn because I, I want, I want y'all to just hear this. I want you to hear. We're going to get to it if the Lord say so. I'm, I'm diving over into the future of this text. And when these men want to get to him, and guess what they say to him? They say to him, and they said, talking to Lot, stand back. That's what these heathens, these wicked men said. Stand back. And they said unto him, this one fellow came into sojourn. He was never one of them. He never fit in. They didn't want him there. And I think Lot was there and he was miserable. The same way we are. Let's go on and tell the truth, y'all. Listen, I didn't say this last night in the message. But in order to be saved, you have to come to the place where you become miserable in your sin as the Spirit of God reveals you to you and your sin to you. Amen. All right? Now, here Christ, he on the cross. And that's a miserable track that he has to make from the garden and even before the garden. Because what do you think he thought about every day? I go to the tree. I got to die for you and you and you and, and for Dennis. He was miserable. And what made him miserable is the thought of getting up under all of our old nasty, filthy, raunchy sin. He drank the dregs of the cup of the wrath of God that was mixed for us. Amen. That's why we preach him. So when you get saved, and then you go back into the world, and you realize that you don't fit that no more. And we're going to stay. Paul said, you know, you know, it, it'd be better for me to go be with the Lord, but it, it's, it's actually necessary that I stay here. Where would I rather be? With the Lord. If you say you hear, truth be told, you're miserable down here. Amen. Because your eyes see what, oh my goodness, you see what Lot sees now because it's beaming in on our TVs, on our Amen. media devices. Everywhere you go. They're, they're, they're forcing it down our throat, yeah. in our ears. Amen. They're grabbing our children Amen. shortly after they come out of the womb that they hate. Oh, they come out. Listen like this. This this one fellow, and see, in the kingdom of God, one's a crowd. They knew Lot was there. They won't study Lot, but they knew he was there. They knew they knew what he stood for. He was salt, and what they didn't know was Lot was there. He was there to be God's divine influence in the cities. But also he would preserve them until others could be saved. That's what salt does. Salt influences the, the, the taste of food. It influences how long you can keep food. I, I know how 
how this story ends about Lot? Did the city get to him? The drink did. Other things got to him. It wore on him. And if you were to tell the truth, it's wearing on you. Amen. But it's vexing your soul. Your spirit. You, I've gotten to the place where I don't even want to leave the house. My wife will tell you. Because you're going to see, as a man, I'm going to see more than I need to see. This is what this man said. This one fella came in the sojourn. They look at him like, you guess. You will come here. You don't belong here. And he will needs be a You will be a judge? See, they don't even factor God in the whole equation of somewhere along the way, Lot was introduced to Yahweh. Elohim. The one who is God, but the other one who is the Lord, he's the self-existing one who reveals. Oh, God. God was, was pretty pretty quiet until the formation of man. And then the Lord started revealing himself and his will and what was going to be good in the realm of the earth that would be pleasing in his sight. And he just started to reveal himself. He's the creator. He's the sustainer. He's the one who sets the parameters. He's the one who gave the command. Preacher has no authority to tell you to do anything. And you don't feel like doing you don't have to do it. But if I give you the word of God, now that's between you and God. Because that same word is for me too. Lot was miserable. Like some of you here. You miserable. You sitting right here, you folks, you miserable. Because your children are in one place. Your family is another place. People around you are acting a fool. And, you, and the person you thought had some sense, and you said, well, you, you and I, we're the only two guys in the sense around here. And then you said, well, I'm starting to wonder about you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my wife would say about me, officer. <laughs> <laughs> now, will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they press so upon the man, even Lot. I'm going to break the door in. Now, hey, I need you to see that. Right, just give me a few more moments. We're going to wrap it up. Pastor, y'all were awfully slow this morning. Bless your heart. Y'all know what I mean. All right. Now, I kept my hand in my Bible. My Bible was soaking wet. How, how's that? All right, let's go back to somewhere where we were. All right. All right, here it is. For that right, verse 8 in, in, uh, in 2 Peter, verse uh, chapter 2. For that righteous man dwelt among them, and seen and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to the, be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh and the lust of uncleanness, that's nastiness, stink, and all that stuff, and despise governments or authorities, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. Whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these are these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Back to Genesis where we're going to close. We'll have to close here. We'll have to pick it up here. Now, so this is, the, this is what we want to leave on your, on your mind and on your heart. Abraham is interceding for his nephew. He's 
what the passage says, peradventure there be 50 righteous within the city, will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? I believe the way Abraham is looking at it, and maybe he didn't. This is the way I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it, you know, where I am, and it don't have to be the truth. You don't have to put it in your notes. I believe that he knew that there was one righteous man up there. Now, he knew what was going on in the city. Well, there was Mrs. Lot. They had daughters. But I believe that he wasn't sure as to the influence of Lot's ministry and testimony in the city. Could it be within Sodom and Gomorrah that there would be 50 people that were saved? Because we're talking about being righteous. It's being right with who? Right with God. <coughs> That's why I think he's getting at, he's starting with this number way up here. Now, he's including a lot in the number. The 49 would be those as a result of Abraham teaching Lot the Lord's way in his own home, that Lot would know how to do it in his home. That Abraham taught him, man, when you go out, you are representing the Lord. You are not to go out and be yourself. You are not to draw attention to yourself. My wife will tell you, I try not to dress to draw women to me. Make men think differently about me. I want people for someone to walk up and say, man, there's something about you. Something about you. Something different about you. And then we keep talking. And they say, well, man, you're my brother in Christ. Because he's out here and his soul vexed. Or her soul is my sister's vexed. If we're drawing more people to ourselves, then we are leading to Jesus Christ. Check that. Because in this year, we want to each one do what? Reach one. Reach just one. You reach one, you can't stop at one. Because heaven is too wonderful. Eternity is too long. Hell is too hot and dark. Got to reach them. So you got to be a, a walking billboard. You got to know by the Spirit of God, when to open your mouth and always keep your ears open. Know when to leave. Know better when not to go at all. Husbands, we can listen to our wives. They say, I don't think you ought to go to that. Because they got those little things that I used to hear one preacher, those little antennas up there, and they pick do 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 So that's what the 50, I believe, in my humble estimation, is all about. And God knows we have to at least get past verse 25. That that be far from thee. And he's talking to the Lord like he knows him. I, I can't talk to him like this. Oh, God. I hope you got that. Yeah, he's talking to him. And let's listen to the language. That be far from thee to do after this manner. To slay the righteous with the wicked. He, he, Abraham knows that's the difference between the righteous because that's an investment that the wicked, who was wicked, heard the message and because everybody's been saved by grace. Don't let nobody fool you. Through faith. God was saved by grace through faith. The same way that everyone has been saved. This is not new. And, and Abraham knew that the investment of the ministry of Jesus Christ in the earth realm, of the word of God, of Yahweh Elohim in the realm of the earth, that listen, he, he's preached to everyone. And this one over here got it. They responded back to the gospel favorably. And Abraham knew that's the difference between the righteous. Because the righteous is salt to the earth and light 
in the world. Amen. To slay the righteous with the wicked and that the righteous should be as the wicked? That's no comparison. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom one plus 49, in the case of Lot plus 49 other people, within the city, then will then I will spare all the place for their sake. For whose sake? The righteous. For whose sake? The salt. The influence of the salt. Do you want to know the reason why some of you, you haven't had the judgment to come upon your children? Your family members? It's because that you are so close to them and maybe it's someone really close to you. And God, because of you are the, the, the salt of the earth and you are preserving them. That young man back there who told that story. And I've shared it here before. That the same evening I called him when those three guys got killed in that automobile accident. The next Sunday morning we were headed over here to hear Pastor Bennett preach. The late Pastor Bennett. And I called him. Tornado had just come through and ripped the church, gutted the church down in Deltaville. He was in the world and he never liked getting my phone calls. Because I wasn't hitting him over the head with the Bible. But I will always say something to make him think about eternity or the judgment of God. I said, what are you going to do tonight? Uh... <laughs> Next morning, we were coming up 360, there around West Store area. My wife gets the phone call and, and she has that, that look of like, Something bad done happened, and I can't hear it. So now, I'm, and I'm a little nosy anyhow. I'm curious. I want to know what's going on. And he was telling about how these fellows had gotten killed. Another one, I, I think he died later. Is that the way he went? And everyone just knew that Dennis DeMontre Dabney was present in the car. Don't know what's going to happen with him before this world is over with, before he leaves here. Shall never forget one night he just had to go out. We, 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 we told him, don't go. And I'll never forget my wife and I. We're going to let him go because we, we're not going to stop him. And I told him where to park the car at. Because I, I just had in my spirit something was going to happen. And we got down like babies. Do you pray with your wives? Do you? Do you? Do you? Grab them by the hand. Pray. We pray. And we wept. And late that night. And it was late. And I get a phone call. And it can't be good. Because when you get a phone call and you got children that are hard-headed on their way to hell, you, you get like, ooh, what's going on? What, what is this? And you get the phone call. Daddy, Daddy, I did exactly what you told me to do. Am I lying? So he could get up out of there. You don't know who's been preserved. Because you're in Christ. Oh, they hate you. They don't like you. They don't respect you. But the only reason, the only reason that little train is still on the rail of the world is because you are the salt of the earth. You are the divine influence of God in their life. Our Father and strong God, we thank you that there are times when someone who's far enough away from Sodom, and we, we all are salt and light the same, but there are times when we, as salt and light, we can be the light because of, we're so far away from the situation that we can be the light to be able to pray and intercede with the Lord of glory for salt. That something in the midst of that nonsense with his wife and children. We thank you for the privilege of being able to do that from time to time. As you said, that we ought to pray ye one for another. 
We thank you, Holy Father, that Abraham interceded for Lot. And for those in whom he believed that a righteous man ought to be able to at least win you know, 40 some people by his influence. We thank you, Father, for speaking to us in this new year, reminding us who we are, but more importantly, that you are the light of the world. You are everything. Holy Father, I'm asking you that in this era that we have before us, that you put evangelism on, on the table of our heart, oh God, as you set it here upon mine. To reach those, not having to go way out of our way, but in those, the ones we come in contact with, our neighbors. And we don't have to rob folk on the job and be witnessing on the clock. We can do it at a time when it's appropriate because you are the God of order. The things ought to be done decently and in order. But Lord, might it be so that each one in here would reach one and not stop, won't look back. We would be who we're supposed to be. They will continue to pray for one another. We will pray for those who are under our roofs, within our family tree, just within our community, within our world that need to be born again into the kingdom of God, that they'd be saved. Thank you, Father. Build your church. Build your church the way as you see fit by the truth of the reality of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Love it. We're gonna uh, we ran over.